Hey everyone, it's Mr. Boyden, your main math teacher, back at it again. This time we're in chapter 4 and we're talking about congruence today. There in the center of the screen, you can see the symbol for congruence. It's just an equal sign with a tilde on top. This is basically the geometry version of the equal sign. In algebra, we have an equal sign. Geometry, it's congruence. Um, we can think of those as being very, very similar. Here's an e easy definition of it for you. Um, it's any time that two shapes or two figures are both the exact same size and the exact same shape. It's okay if they're rotated or translated, but aside from that, they have to be the same in each and every way. And so we've got a couple of examples here on the screen. And so start off by looking at these rectangles over here. Okay, we've got two rectangles, and the question is, are the following pairs of objects congruent? So take a look at those two rectangles. And yeah, they are. They're rotated, but it's the exact same rectangle. Um, sometimes people think the bottom rectangle is a little bit thinner than the top one. Um, I can assure you it's an optical illusion. I copy and paste them. So they are absolutely congruent. Let's move on now to these little diamonds or whatever you want to call them over here. Are these congruent? No. The one on the right is bigger. It's elongated. It's all stretched out. So no, they're not congruent. What about these clocks? They are the same exact shape. Uh, it can be a little tricky though. So Notice how this clock on the right has a different minute hand than the clock on the left. So it really is up to the interpreter and in the eye of the beholder on this. If you think that means they're the same, that's okay. Um, they're definitely clocks. The numbers are in the same spots. But the hands are in different places. So if you say no, that's okay too. What about these triangles? Yep, they're flipped. They're the exact same triangle, same shape, same size. So they are congruent. And what about our smiley faces down here? Okay, we've got little smiley face and we've got big smiley face. Well, wait a minute. We said they'd be the exact same size. So no, those are not equal. Now, while we're talking about congruent shapes, let's talk about why maybe we would care about whether or not shapes are congruent. Okay, so here we've got an image of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge right in our home city here in Tacoma. Um, and I want you to look for a minute and see if you can find any congruent shapes on there. And why would we care? Well, the one that jumps out to a lot of people is all these triangles. Okay, we've got a triangle here, same triangle there. Switch colors so it shows up a little better. So triangle, 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 triangle. And all these are the same. And we want those all to be congruent, or otherwise we're going to have an inconsistent bridge. It's going to be bumpy. It's not going to be sturdy. The reason they use triangles is because the triangle is the only shape that is completely rigid. There's no way without breaking the metal to break it. Um, it. It doesn't fold. It's not flimsy. And for any three given side lengths, um, so side length, side length, side length, there's only one triangle that can be made, which makes it an extremely sturdy shape for building. Um, so geometry is fairly applicable to life. Um, because most of us at some point or another, we're going to build something. You know, we're going to have something around the apartment, around the house um, that we're going to have to fix or we're going to want to build something. Um, in my case, um, I've built rabbit hutches and done home repairs and um, little wood woodworking projects and things that have required a little bit of understanding of geometry. Um, and this rule that triangles are stronger than four-sided shapes has been really, really useful to me. So if this bridge didn't have the triangles, but instead all it had was, let's say, a series of rectangles. Um, with almost complete certainty, I can tell you the bridge would have collapsed by now. Um, rectangles aren't very strong, but as soon as you add those triangles in, now the bridge is very, very sturdy and very safe. As far as us getting a little bit more specific for what we want in a geometry class for congruence, um, what we want for a shape, and specifically we're going to start with triangles, we want the angles to have the same measures. Well, that means the angles are congruent. And the same thing with the side lengths. We want side lengths to have the same length. Okay, and that's the definition of congruence for side lengths. So you may want to pause the video here and record that this is what we're looking for. This is our definition for congruence, and these are the criteria that we're going to use. Let's talk a little bit about how to name the shapes and about corresponding parts so they're in the same location. So notice on the screen we have two triangles. Um, they are the exact same triangle. One of them was just rotated and we gave it different letters. So let's talk about what we mean when we say corresponding parts. Okay, All that means is that this angle C, if you can tell where once this shape, this triangle, turned into the triangle on the right, where does C land? With which letter? J L, 
or k, does it match? Well, we can see that this is sort of that uh, the end where the two longest sides come together. And where does that happen? That happens down there at k. So when we talk about corresponding parts, that's what we mean. And so the way we can write that out right now, we can say that angle C is congruent to angle K because they're corresponding parts. What about angle A? Where is the corresponding angle on the other triangle that goes with A? Well, that's down here at angle L. And what about angle B? What does that correspond with? Angle B, if that rotates over, that corresponds to angle J. And they're in the same location. Now, let's look at our question over here on the left. We want to name three pairs of congruent sides. A moment ago, we just named angles. So pay attention to how we label the sides. So I want to start with this side, the side that goes CA. And if it's a side, I need to indicate that somehow. I'm going to do that by putting a little bar across the top. And so now I want to find the side that corresponds to side CA. Now remember, C corresponded to K, and A corresponded to L. So side CA will have to correspond to side KL as we connect those. Okay, let's do another one. How about CB? CB is going to be congruent to KJ. And then with this last one, I'm going to pick AB. And why don't you try to go ahead and fill in what's going to happen on the other side? So AB is going to correspond to what? I hope you picked LJ, because that is the corresponding side. Now there's a little bit of a trick to this. Um, we've named the sides, named the angles. One thing that I think you'll find um, in terms of like standardized testing that makes this a little bit easier is if you look at the way that triangles are named, often they'll give you the name. The symbol we use for triangles looks like this. Let's name these triangles. I'm going to call the first one A, B, C. And the next one, well, let's see. We need to be careful. The order matters on this. So I'm looking for what corresponds with A. I traced around A, B, C, and so that means I'm going to correspond with L, J, and K. Okay, and I want you to notice something. As I look at the way these go, A and L are the first letter given. Notice A and L go together down here. B and J were the next two that went together. B and J were corresponding parts down here. And finally, I think you can probably guess where I'm going with this. C and K are the last letter to appear. C and K go together here. And that's no accident. As geometers, we do that on purpose in order to communicate really, really clearly. So now, when I want something like CA, uh oh, that sort of crossed that out, didn't it? When I want something like CA, notice C and A are the first and last, and K and L are the first and last. And so KL down here go together. Okay? That's a little trick you can use um, when you're given something like. Uh, this triangle congruence statement, you can use that to your advantage in answering these types of questions. Let's go through a couple more examples and gain a little comfort and familiar with it, familiarity with this. Excuse me. So with something like this, we're not given a picture, and that can be a little bit challenging. Let's try to answer the question and see what we can figure out. We're given the number of degrees in angle Y, the number of degrees in angle M, and we need the number of degrees in angle X. Now, for most people, it's really, really challenging to just read those words and figure out what's going on. So what makes this a little bit easier is if we remember this statement right here. We remember that this is about triangles. And so I'm going to actually try to draw those out. And what's interesting about this, it doesn't matter where I put these letters. I mean, I can go X, Y, Z. I could have put those in totally different places. It doesn't matter. But here's what does matter. Because x was the first thing here and k is the first thing here, those are corresponding parts. And I must put them in the same place. So since x was in the bottom left corner, k has to be in the bottom left corner. Since y is the second letter and l is the second letter, I have to put y and l in the same place. And the same thing with z and m. I have to put them in the same locations. 
Now we can label up the picture. Remember, angle Y is 67 and angle M is 48. And so now, because we have that information, we can find some corresponding parts. Now remember, we said that Y is congruent to L because Y and L are in the same spot. So how many degrees are right here? Well, 67, that was given. Where does the 48 belong in the triangle on the left? Well, M and Z were corresponding, so this is also 48. And then let's consider what we were asked. We were asked to find angle X. That's this guy right here. So thinking back to what we learned in the last lesson, in the previous unit, we remember that triangles have an angle sum of 180 degrees. So let's subtract 67 and let's subtract 48 off of there and let's see what we get. And when we do that, it looks like we get 65. So that indicates to us that angle X is 65 degrees. And now we were able to answer the question. Now notice the strategy we used on this. A lot of students, when they're just starting, they read the question, they get frustrated, and they give up. Don't do that. In geometry especially, it's useful if you draw a picture. So as soon as we were able to draw the picture, this exercise became pretty easy, actually. But if we had never drawn the picture or if we drew it incorrectly, it's not very accessible to us. Keep that in mind. Okay, we'll do one last one, um, and then we'll close out this video for today. So here's our third example, and this one is a little bit different. In the previous example, we were asked to find numbers. In this one, all we're doing is we're wondering, can we conclude that it's a true fact that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDE based on the figure below? And so a lot of students look at this. I say, oh, yeah, look, those two triangles are the same. Life is good. You know, there's a four and a four, a three and a three. All the markings look similar, so yes. But that's not actually what this question is asking. It's really asking, is this way of labeling accurate? And so think about it like this. They're asking, does A actually correspond with C? So let's ask that. Angle A is right down here, and it's got one marker on it. Now, before we even get into this, angle A matches which angle in the other triangle? Look, that has one angle marker, and that has one angle marker. So A and E should go together. But looking up here, A doesn't go with E. It goes with C. And so that indicates to us that there's a problem here. So can we conclude that this statement is true? No, absolutely not. We can't. Even though it looks like the triangles are the same in the picture, based on the way they wrote out those letters, we have to say no, because that statement, this congruency statement, is false. So look out for that on your assignment today. Um, I hope this video is helpful for you, and I wish you luck, and we'll see you in class soon. Bye-bye.